Game modifications don't just exist for PC games. Diligent coders and hackers make patches and mods for console games like we see here for Shadow the Hedgehog. In this case, a patch will allow the core game to be showed in widescreen presentation instead of the original aspect ratio of 4x3. Typically, tools for modding are for Windows, making it challenging to use on the Steam Deck. Since this is a teach and do channel, we're going to give you the basic knowledge you need to understand how these things work, then we're going to patch Shadow the Hedgehog for widescreen presentation. Stick around. Modifying games, regardless of platform, requires some understanding of the different means of modifying. Doing them on the Steam Deck requires even more information, so let's get started. Modifications come in three basic forms, file replacements, configuration changes, and binary patching. Sometimes it's a combination of all three. File replacement is exactly what it sounds like. Some file, an EXE or a DLL file is altered by the modders and you, the end user, are required to replace your existing file with the altered one. This is usually the simplest method, that is, of course, unless your game is a giant compressed single file ISO, eh, that gets nasty. Configuration changes are also exactly what they sound like. You find, open, and add, remove, edit lines of the configuration to change the settings of the game. A common example of this is the recently released Lollipop Chainsaw Remaster. Unfortunately, sometimes configuration files are encrypted, making it impossible for the normal person to make edits. Finally, you have binary patching. Typically, on Windows, this is done with a centralized modding tool to take all the burden, and unfortunately the knowledge, off of your shoulders. Unfortunately, on the Steam Deck, this is more of a challenge. But what does patching really mean? At the core of it, patching is changing bytes or characters in a file based on a location in the file and a value that is already there. This could be as small as a single byte value or it could be hundreds or even thousands. Changing these values will alter the way the file works, typically by altering the code that runs the game. Now, if you extrapolate a few thousand bytes of patching across dozens of files, well, you can see why there are mod tools out there to make this easier. Shame most of them don't work with the Steam Deck, though. The last consideration with file patching is that because the patcher is expecting a certain byte value in a certain location within the file, the file you're patching must be the exact version of the one that the patcher was created for. If a patch is made for the Japanese ISO of a PlayStation 1 game, you can typically not use the same patcher on the USA ISO of the same game. We're going to do a mod to Shadow the Hedgehog for widescreen presentation. This is using a very simple single file ISO binary patch. Now I warn you with peace and love, peace and love, almost every mod is different. You have the various types as we've already explained and some of them are made for Windows and you may have issues running them on the deck at all. What we do for this video is pretty easy. Others you encounter may be completely different. The education part is over, let's get on with the mod. You obviously need the game itself. Now, if we go to the mod page, we see clearly that this mod is for the NTSC USA ISO edition of the game. If you don't have that version, you're gonna need to find it. If you don't have it in ISO format, you're gonna have to convert it. Now, I can't help you get the game. That would be piracy and we don't talk about that here especially with Nintendo on the warpath, but I can help you with everything else. So now I have the ISO in question downloaded. It is the correct version for this patch. Now, we need the patch file. In this case, the mod is a very common cross-platform friendly format called X-Delta. That's part of the reason I chose this modification. Keep it simple. On the mod GitHub page, we find the file we need. When we download it, make sure it preserves the .xdelta extension. Some browsers like to mangle the file names. The xdelta file is basically a set of patching instructions. What location to look at, what value is supposed to be there, and what we need to change it to. Of course, this file doesn't work without a patching tool. Fortunately, xdelta has a tool for Linux and we can get it right from the Discover Store. 
Yet another reason I chose this game and mod for this tutorial. Open the Discover store and search for Delta. You should see Delta Patcher show up, install that guy, and launch it. It really can be more simple. Select the file to be patched. In this case, we'll select the NTSC USA ISO version of the game. Next, we choose the X-Delta patch we downloaded earlier. We hit the button and we wait. Sometimes this is super quick. Sometimes it can take a while. If all worked out, you'll get a success message like this one. That's it. Now we drop the file into our emulation ROMs GC folder for GameCube. a trip to ESDE, and we'll run the game. Now, notice how some of the content is still 4x3. This is normal. These sorts of hacks aren't magic. They can't take 4x3 videos or hard-fixed items and make them widescreen. But as we get into the game itself, you'll see that it is indeed in widescreen in-game. With our work being done, you can delete the xDelta file, and if you no longer need it, uninstall the Delta Patcher application. Again, I want to stress that almost every modification is different in size, scope, execution. Following this tutorial to the letter only works with the game and mod in question. You're going to have to roll up your sleeves for the other types. Listen, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. As always, like, subscribe, share, and bashing that bell, of course, will ensure you never miss another Monroe World video. I'm Shane R. Monroe. Thanks so much for watching, and take care. We'll see you next time.